Good morning, Connections. I'm glad you're here. I hope you had an opportunity to see yesterday's devotional because we talked about the importance of God's Word. As I continue to emphasize, if you don't know God's Word, then you are severely hampering your relationship with God because you don't know how God speaks. Through God's Word, you will develop a vocabulary where you will be able to have greater understanding of who God is, greater understanding of who you are, and you will develop a vocabulary where you can communicate more clearly with God, and God can communicate more clearly with you. What great benefits there are to knowing God's Word. We spoke of it in reference of, from yesterday, of the form of discipline. We need to know what pleases God and displeases God, and it is truly God's word that defines those boundaries. So what's next? Well, it's not uh, only necessary for us to know God's word, but we must be able to apply God's word to how we carry ourselves. And as we mentioned uh, last Sunday, and as we'll continue to talk this Sunday, is our relationships with one another are the workshop where we apply God's word. If we are interacting with, with people we don't know or meeting for the very first time, they should know that we are sons and daughters of God by how we carry ourselves, how we speak, and what we bring to that conversation. And on through all of our relationships, whether it's a work relationship, a friend relationship, a family relationship, a, a marriage relationship, or a relationship with God, Everyone in those relationships should know that we are who we say we are. One of the most damaging things that we can do in our relationship with God and the relationship that God desires to have with others is that we talk a good talk, but by our actions, there's no sign that we truly apply the things that we talk about. It's not enough to say it, we must do it. If we are caught not following through, we are nothing but, say it with me, hypocrites. And there are hypocrites everywhere in the world. There are so many hypocrites that a Christian hypocrite is just added to the list of other people who have said one thing and then when you get it home, it's something completely different. Our culture is inundated with a bunch of hypocrites. And here we are charged with reaching all of those who don't have a relationship with God. And instead of representing God well, we are just thrown in the heap of just another person who overpromised and underdelivered. How are we going to learn to do better? We're going to treat each other as God has, has treated us. We are going to follow Jesus' example on how he ministered to those that he came in contact. And today we're going to talk about we are going to forgive as God has forgiven us. But I want to make a stop along the way. I want to stop here in Matthew 18 as Jesus gives instruction on how to resolve conflict when conflict arises. We are not always going to be in agreement and we are going to wound each other without really meaning to, or sometimes meaning to, but we're going to have to resolve that conflict. And so Jesus gives us a clear uh, recipe for resolving conflict. So we look at Matthew 18 and 15, verse 15. If another believer sins against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that Everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case 
to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan or as a corrupt tax collector. All right, so that's Jesus's instructions, and you see each step of the way. Now, typically we want to make the our, our conflict public and win um, as much as many people to our side as possible. That's not what Jesus is asking. But the reason why we started here today is to say we've gone through all the steps properly and the individual that we're in conflict with, we just can't come to a resolution. And now we have no choice but to separate ourselves from one another. To be treated as a, a corrupt tax collector or to a pagan is to now be considered outside the family of God. And that's where we pick up the story of forgiveness today. Because the reason why we separate and treat somebody as if as they are outside the relationship with God is not to condemn them to death or to an eternity to be away from God. We are praying that through restoration, through recognizing that it was much better to be part of God's family than apart that God will create the opportunity to rebuild the bridge that has been lost. And that's truly what I want to focus on today as we turn our attention to 2 Corinthians 2, 5. So if Jesus is giving us the instructions on how to manage conflict and resolve conflict before it gets so bad that you have to go our separate ways, then Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth of don't let that person dangle out there for too long. You can apply the principles of God and specifically forgiveness and grow in your relationship with God while restoring the one who sinned. 2 Corinthians 2, 5. I am not overstating it when I say that the man who caused all of the trouble hurt all of you more than he hurt me. Most of you opposed him, and that was punishment enough. Now, however, it is time to forgive and comfort him. Otherwise, he may be overcome by discouragement. That is what we always have to recognize is that even when we are making a break and we've gone through the steps that Jesus has asked of us, we are not, we don't wash our hands of our responsibility of being part of the restoration. Isn't that what God has done for us? When we were outsiders, when we were enemies of God, he sent Jesus to die on the cross extending his hand and offering forgiveness, and through that forgiveness, our salvation. We must always remember that God has gone through all of the things that he is asking us to now represent as his ambassadors. So we don't ever wash our hands. We extend our hands and say, brother, sister, you are forgiven. And in that, we are now practicing what we preach and not seen, as we spoke earlier, as hypocrites. Continuing in eight, so I urge you now to reaffirm your love for him. I wrote to you as I did to test you and to see if you would fully comply with my instructions. When you forgive this man, I forgive him too. And when I forgive whatever needs to be forgiven, I do so with Christ's authority for your benefit, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Paul recognizes this is an opportunity for God to test the church's heart. Are we going to Forgive, or are we going to allow the very things that seeped in that created the division in the first place to seep into our hearts? Bitterness and resentment and anger. When that 
consumes our hearts and hardens our hearts so that we can no longer extend forgiveness to those who have done wrong, then we are no better than they are. And the devil begins to be able to create division, not even in that first conflict, but create conflict and just have it mushroom from there. In order to outwit the devil's schemes, we must be willing to walk as God has asked us to walk, to walk as Jesus walked, and extend forgiveness to those who do not deserve to be forgiven. That is called grace. And that is how you and I arrived here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We don't deserve to be here, Lord, but you extended forgiveness and an opportunity to come into your family. And now, as your children, you ask us to, to graduate from that same experience, applying your principles, applying your word to our daily lives. To not only know, know your word, Lord, but put it into practice. You are well aware that one of the most difficult things that we struggle with is our ability to forgive. We hang on to things too long. We choose to remain rigid when you have asked us to, to embrace those who have struggled. Lord, forgive us for our hard-heartedness we pray, Lord, that you would soften our hearts today and allow us to participate as you desire to restore all of those who have wounded us in the past. We pray, Lord, that we would pass the test and that we would bring glory and honor to you by being recognized as followers of Jesus. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to wrap up tomorrow, take another slight bend. And what do we do when people just can't hear us? But that's for tomorrow. Please know that I love you and I miss you, and I hope to see you back here tomorrow. Until then, please be good. <laughs>